So a few weeks ago, Nick over at Typer Active reached out to me asking if I wanted to check out their Lily 58 wireless build. Now, of course, I said yes to this because if you're not aware, a few months ago, I actually covered their wireless corn build, which on their website has a nice configurator that gives you a real-time 3D preview of all the components as you spec it out, and it makes it really easy to get up and running with a wireless build. Now, they took the exact same configurator and applied it to the Lily 58, and today we're just going to be building it. Let's start by taking a look at the PCB here because the really cool thing with Typer Active boards is that they come about 90% pre-assembled, and then all we have to do is solder the controller on them, flash some firmware, and put our switches in. So if we look at the PCB here, you can see we have all our sockets and diodes on the back. We have our power switch, our reset button, our battery connector, and you can see that we just have a blank spot here for the controller. And then we also have these five pins here, which are for a display, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. So I'm just going to put the PCB down. I'm going to grab my controller, and this is a nice nano if you've ever seen it. It's basically the same size as a Pro Micro with a USB-C port, and it just gives wireless capability to any Pro Micro board, basically. But we're going to be taking this, and I'm going to refer to this as the face here, which is the side with the chips. This is the back side, and if we look at our PCB, you can see it says face down. So the controller will kind of sit on there just like that. Now, you could solder this on with the included little headers like this, which are just solder headers. But the problem with those is that if you say spill water on your controller and need to remove it in the future, it's a massive pain because you have to desolder like 24 pins, and it can take a long time to do that. So instead, we're going to be using these here, which are pin socket headers. And this side goes on the board, and then you have a side that connects to the controller. So that connects to the controller, that connects to the board. And these make it really easy if you ever need to replace it. You basically just pop the controller out and then pop a new one in. It's super simple. So we're just going to grab our PCB here. We're going to grab one of our female pin socket headers. We're just going to put it into the holes on the PCB here. Grab the other one, put it on the other side. I'm doing this at around 300 degrees Celsius, just in case you're wondering. So there they are, all soldered on. That took maybe like a minute to do, but they're just on there and you can see they're super low profile. So very low profile, basically the battery was slip in between these. And now all we have to do is get the controller on. So I'm gonna put this down, I'm gonna grab my controller. And remember I mentioned the face is the side with the chips. You want that to go like that. So we're just gonna grab the male side of the pins and these will have two sides on them. So you can see there's a longer side and a shorter side. The shorter side goes to the controller, the longer side will socket into the socket. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna put it into one of the sockets like so, grab the other one, click that one into the other half. So you can see they're just sitting in there. Then we'll grab our controller and we'll put it on here. Now, the important thing with this is that if we look at the controller, you can see there's this little tiny pad up top here, and then there's this one below it. You wanna make sure that the last pin is on the last pin of the controller and that it's not sitting like that because that would be incorrect and everything would be lopsided. So we wanna make sure that we get the positioning right. So you can see that just kind of goes like that. Now, the important thing when soldering a nice nano is that on our soldering iron, I'm gonna actually take this, I'm gonna lower it down to 280 degrees Celsius. Something with the NRF chips is that if you use too high of a temperature, you can actually possibly damage the controller. So you wanna make sure that you just keep the temperature a little bit lower on your iron and you should be good to go. So it's the same process as the sockets, just on the controller now. So we're just gonna go through on each side and solder it in place. So there's a the controller soldered onto the pins and you can notice this little pad here. I just want to point this out is that if you bridge the pads on this, that will give you a higher charging current, but do not do that with the included battery because it could possibly explode. If you're using like a 500 milliamp or 750, it will give it a little bit faster charge. But on the default battery, if these pads are bridged, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they're not bridged because you can explode your batteries. So just a side note, but at this point, I'm gonna put this down and we're gonna talk about the display now. This right here is the nice view display. You can see it says nice view right there. And yes, I wanna get out of the way first. These are very expensive. They're about 20 bucks each, but there's a reason for that. They're very special in the fact that they use extremely low power draw. So for wireless builds, they won't kill your battery. And they also have like a 30 Hertz refresh rate. Now, normally on a normal wired board, I wouldn't actually recommend any types of displays because they're kind of useless in my opinion that you can really just show artwork or your layer but on a wireless build, they're really useful because you can see your battery life, you can see the connected profile, so whatever device you're connected to, and you can also see the status of if the halves are actually paired between each other, but we're just gonna solder this onto the board now. It's basically the same exact process. We just have these little socket headers here. We have the one that goes into the board and then the one that connects to the display there, but these are a little bit of a pain to solder on because they kind of fall out. So if I grab this and put it on here, into the holes for the display. You can see it just kind of falls out and doesn't really stick in there. So when you flip it upside down to solder it, it's a little bit hard to do. So what I recommend with this is we take the little socket here and I'm gonna grab this heat tape I have. This is something I picked up recently that's really useful for soldering because it's really resistant to temperature. I'm just gonna take a piece. And I'm gonna take my socket here and I put it into the port on the PCB. And I could take my tape and kind of use it to hold it in place. So you put that on there, and then you can see that that's kind of held on there so I can easily solder it on the back. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 
So you can see that those are all soldered onto the PCB now. They're sitting on there perfectly. We're gonna put this down and then we're gonna grab our display and we're gonna grab our headers here. You wanna take note that there's a short end and a long end. The short end will connect to the PCB socket. So if we take those and put them in here, those will go like that, as you can see right there. And you can take your display and just put it on top like so, and then simply solder those pins there and then that's done. You see now that that's socketed on there and we can just simply grab it and lift right up to remove it. And then we have to get this controller out. Now there are a bunch of ways you can do this, but the way I like to do is grab my board and then grab a tweezer like such, put it right on the edge and make sure that I'm only touching the PCB material, not hitting any components underneath. And then I simply just kind of lever it up. You'll see it starts to disconnect. You'll get a little bit of clearance like such, and then you can just grab it, put it down like this and just kind of lift up like so, and then you can remove it. So there's our controller, there's our little OLED, and then there is our PCB. Now all we have to do is connect the battery. So if we grab our PCB and grab a battery, you can see that the battery has a little notch on it right there that will plug in to the PCB. So we'll just plug that in here, like so. And then we can take the battery and then run it right up here and kind of squeeze the wire in between so you can see how that sits is that it plugs in, wire runs in there, and then that's it. So we'll hold this in place and then we'll take our controller and we'll make sure to socket it properly. So we'll take this, take our controller, and then just click it into place on top. That will hold the battery assembly together. So there's that. Then we will take this here and put it on top. And that's one assembled side of our board. Now you can see that this is off. You will be able to turn it on now and you'll see our display shows nothing. So let's turn that off. What I have to do now is go through and do the left half of the board. I'm not gonna show you all the steps for it because it's the exact same as this side here. And then we'll be back in a moment when I have both sides and we'll get ready to flash the firmware. There's the left half all wired up. Took me maybe about 10 minutes to do that in total. But at this point, we're gonna take the case here, which is a 3D print, nice textured bottom, nice size and everything. And we're gonna put this into there like so. I'm just gonna do that really quick. So I started mounting everything into the case here and then I realized that you actually have to put the switches on first because they just go through, the little standoffs go through the PCB and then they connect to the plate here so you can screw the plate in with the switches. So what we're gonna do is grab our switches now and we're just using the JWIC blacks that it came with, just black linear switches. We're gonna pop this out of the case. We're gonna grab our plate here and you wanna take note that these are upside down or technically probably the right way to mount hot swap sockets. So you can see that the pins are on the top. So that means the switch will go this way. So we're gonna grab our plate. And we're gonna put the switch in the top right here and make sure it fully clicks in. And then we can align that with the top right pin and then just push it in by the switch. So we're gonna go through now and do that for every single one. You wanna make sure that you're pushing and pulling this plate in places so that they fully click in. So like for example, in this area here, you can see that this switch isn't fully in. So what I would do is I'd kind of pull the plate to kind of get it aligned and then you can see it aligns properly. And then once you have enough of those aligned on the plate here, you'll be able to kind of put the rest in without having to worry too much, but just the first few that needs to get the plate aligned with everything. So there's both halves in the case. It looks really nice and clean, I think. But I do want to quickly point out if Typer Active is listening is that you're using these flathead screws and I do like them. I think they look really clean, but I don't like them also because you can see here, I scratched the board when trying to get this one in because they're kind of really hard to get aligned and everything. I would rather just see like a hex screw there. It'd probably be a little bit easier. But what we're gonna do now is we have to grab these here, which are the display covers. They have different options for these. Like you can get a 3D printed one that color matches your case with a cutout, but I'm gonna just be using these acrylic ones. So I'm gonna open these really quick. So this is a clear piece of acrylic that we'll take and put over our controller and OLED. I don't believe this was an option on the corn kit, so I'm really happy that they brought it to this one because I like being able to see my electronics inside. So I'm just gonna mount these really quick. It just comes with a little baggie of components and we'll just put that on there. So it turns out I'm a big dummy. If you look here, you can see there's the holes there for the little standoffs that will go there. But if we look on the back, no holes. So how am I gonna mount those? Well, you're supposed to mount those before you put it in the case. So I have to go through and do that now. I'm, I'll be back in a few moments because I got a time lapse through this.
those are on there now and they look pretty nice. I'm really happy with how it looks with the exposed controller and everything in there. But at this point, I just have to put the keycaps on, which just did include a bunch of DSA blanks. But I'm just gonna install these really quick. I'll be back in a moment. So there's the fully assembled board here. I think it looks really clean with the blacked out look and the clear acrylic over there. Really like how it came out. But at this point, we just have to do the firmware, which is super simple now because there's an online tool we can use for ZMK to configure everything on my iPad and just upload it to the controllers. So we're gonna jump in there and we'll take a look. We're just on the firmware section for the Lily 58 wireless on the Typer Active documentation. And we're just gonna scroll down to where it says building your own firmware. We're gonna click where it says repository under nice view. This will open us up inside a GitHub. And what we can do in here is just go to fork. Or we're just gonna fork this under our own GitHub account. You will obviously need a GitHub account to do this. So if you don't have one, we'll just create it, it's free. But then we're gonna just click create fork and it'll bring us here in which we're gonna to want to go to the actions tab. Now under here, we're gonna click, I understand my workflows, go ahead and enable them. What this will do is once we make any code changes or the graphical tool makes any changes to that, it will compile the firmware on GitHub and then we can just download our files. So once this is enabled, we can go back over to the documentation and then scroll down to where it says the visual online key map editor. And then we'll scroll down to where it says, try it now, go to the key map editor, which will open up the actual tool here. And then we have a GitHub keyboard already. So we'll click GitHub and we'll want to log in with GitHub. And then you won't actually initially see your keyboard here. So we're gonna to wanna to go to manage available repos. And then I'm gonna add that one I just created, which if I type in Lily 58, you'll see that we have this one here. We'll click save and then we'll go back over to the tool. And then eventually it will show up. If it's still not showing up, you can just refresh the page and hopefully now it will show up in here. There we go. So we can select that and you'll see that we have our entire layout here. Now at this point, you can make any changes to the key map that you wanna do, but it's important that no matter what you do here, that you always save it or trigger it to save by some way, this way that it will actually update the GitHub action. So we'll jump over into GitHub here and you'll see that this already compiled to my updated Lily 58 key map. We can click on that and then you'll see we have a firmware artifact down below. So we'll just download that really quick and then we can go and open it inside of Finder I will just extract that here, jump inside, and you see we have a left firmware and a right firmware. Now at this point, we're gonna grab just one half of the board. I'm gonna start with the right half. We're gonna plug it in, and then you're just gonna hit the reset button to make sure it resets, and you'll see it show up as a drive here on the left side. So all we're gonna do is drag the right side, and you wanna make sure this matches whichever side you're using. We're gonna drag and drop that on there, and of course it's gonna give me an error. So anyway, that error is not the keyboard being a pain, that's actually iOS being a pain because their file system's a little bit weird there. I just ran upstairs and just flashed the firmware on there already. So we have both halves here fully flashed and we can just power on the right half and you'll see that that screen will load and then we have a nice image showing up on there. And then we also have the left half, which we could power on. And yet again, it will load. And then we have our layers and all our stuff on there, which is nice. And then also that little word per minute meter there. But what we have to do at this point is we have to actually pair both halves to one another. Otherwise they won't work as a single keyboard. It will only be this side, the left half that will work. So we're gonna grab both of them and we have to simultaneously press the reset button on both of them. I'm gonna grab a tweezer and all I'm gonna do is just press both of those at the same time. And you should see that they are now paired. And if we look on my iPad here, we see the Lily 58 showing up. We're just gonna pair to that. We'll click pair on it. And then we should be able to type something. So if I come in here and then I try to type, we have a keyboard working. And at this point, we're ready for a typing test because this is a keyboard video. What would a keyboard video be without a typing test? So let's go do that. So that's the entire process to build a wireless Lily 58. Now I think the board looks really nice here. I love the textured bottom. I love the screens on it. If you look there, it has this nice like mountain image on it with all our indicators and stuff. And then under the acrylic, looks really nice. Same thing on the left half, we have our layers and word per minute graph. Really came out great. I think it looks nice in the all black. This is like my only board that I have that's completely blacked out. But that's it. That's the entire build. Pretty simple. Thanks to Typer Active for sending me out one of these to look at. And I don't have much else to say here. I'll link them down below. If you did enjoy the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.